my studio, my atelier, my workspace. In the past, I spent years working in the nonprofit industrial complex, constantly ramming my head against the walls of manipulation, self-limiting beliefs, savior complexities, white guilt, Alphabet Org's covert operations, bureaucratic molasses processes, band-aids for bullet wounds, and pacifiers for activists. Parallel to that, I've always been creative, making art for the sake of making art. In many ways, very selfishly, or disguised as nonconformity drenched in unrelenting rebellion. I'm too real for that fake. I've never had a problem with working, to hustle, to grind, to take initiative, doing whatever needed to be done, to wear many hats, or my favorite, other duties as needed. In my younger adult years, I didn't always have the social-emotional intelligence to self-regulate and navigate the hierarchy, the politics, to communicate effectively, to address harmful practices. Oh, wait, let me not get ahead of myself. Some shit is the norm. Some shit was creepy. Some people was just... Some people just kept moving on up. And now they in political power positions. America! All real shit aside. 2020, like many, I reached my wit's end. I couldn't hide it. I started calling it for what it is. Some of it obliviousness, some of it reactionary, some of it ignorant, but all of it needed to stop. I got tired of leadership handing out blanket statements that didn't cover what we all felt or were experiencing. I became inclined to respond to actions initiated towards staff that were reactionary and often were performative, seeming shallow, lacking any depth, meaning, subtlety, or nuance. I didn't hold back. Colleagues often spoke as if I lose my job, and I often respond, if I did, for saying the truth, if it's worth it. Eventually, staff would come to me with complaints and seeking advice on how they should resolve their own workplace challenges. Now, going back further, I tried to start before my previous jobs, from trying to start a union at one of them to then being the shop steward at another which with that one was a moment of extreme gratification. As a youth, I've protested. I've organized for various social issues regarding the health and well-being of my peers and community. So this was a natural state of being to advocate for any and all. The work I've committed myself to doing is self-empowerment and advocacy through education, through awareness, and through action. But this last job at this particular time in the world, eh -eh. work. One of many aspects of work. One of those aspects of work is the work itself. Growing up, a lot of people in my family died. Aunties, uncles, cousins, even my own mother in 2018, which in many ways became the catalyst for me to take music more seriously, to give more focus to it. Music was always a form of therapy for me a way to connect with others, a vehicle to transport good energy and give support. It led me into the career path I spent so much time in. It led me to my wife, to the many significant relationships I still hold dearly to this day. Those all day, late night, marathon studio sessions. It was my dojo, my home away from home, my hyperbolic time chamber. R.I.P. Toriyama. A place to reflect, to process, to avoid, and deflect from everything. People recall me eating a bag of fruits and veggies in the studio. It was a response to seeing so many die from health issues. Diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, the list goes on. I'd work out, refine my consistency, go through a bad breakup over a decade ago, and zone in on what my physical health requires, my needs. Go to work, make music with friends, Held them along the way. Repeat, this was my process. I do my best to find balance and remain content, to make peace with my decisions and come to terms with whatever was in front of me. And then 2020 happened. It was like, I was so ready. Apocalyptic feelings, Resident Evil, 28 days later vibes. I was ready. Witnessing the hall of society brought me so much peace. Now, by no means did I want people to experience pain, harm, hurt, or death, but I had no control over the circumstances. 
I felt less inclined to feel guilty when I, for the life of me, felt like the square peg in the round hole of life's obligatory social contract. The anxiety of not knowing what was there was minuscule in comparison to the excitement of being ready for something new. I started cranking out music. I started releasing songs. Even more, I was doing so much at my job remotely to accommodate the new standard. I loved it. I was collaborating with so many new people from all over the country, making dope. Seeing people were activated, motivated. And the whole time I knew it wasn't going to last. Outcast, Stankonia, Equipment. Speaker box. I knew eventually the distractions would come back. The energy would shift. And change would be postponed for the next popular device, tool of consumption, event for fear of missing out. The anger mounted. Couldn't sit by as people in power broke laws and escaped litigation with NDAs and handfuls of money, preying on the economically disadvantaged. Couldn't continue to support a system that maintained interest in drawn out processes that kept meetings at the forefront and changed as a tethered carrot for the ones who were seeking it out. Had to go. Decided going for broke was better than ending up broken. What they think, especially when I know who they are. They not me, and I never want to be them. The work is being me. The work is loving me. The work is what you make it. The work, as far as this, is well context for what's to come. Stay tuned, stay fearless. I love me. I hope you love you. I love you. Peace. And the work is cleaning up all this Because <laughs> I'm not a hoarder. I'm just a collector of a lot of sh dope sh stuff. <laughs>